How y'all doing this morning? Uh, this is Pastor and Chef Tony Carcella. Um, we're shooting down here at our home in Landrum, South Carolina, here in the upstate. And uh, today, uh, this is the third video in a series called Man Cannot Live by Bread Alone. And today we are making pizza or tomato pie dough, whatever, you, you know, whatever you're making pizza, tomato pie. The crust is still the same, whether you're making a pizza or a tomato pie. Um, and many people have written and have said to me, that, you know, oh, I'm, I'm afraid, I don't want to mess with yeast, I don't want to mess with dough. Well, I just wanted to comfort you all out there and tell you that, uh, number one, you're not alone. Um, I'm not boasting now. I, I'm, and the Bible said, if any man boasts, let him boast in the Lord. I'm boasting on my Lord Jesus Christ that um, he has taken me to places and to cook for people and uh, famous people, celebrities. My food's in a Hollywood movie. I fed movie stars, governors, officials. Uh, the owner of, of the Chicago uh, Bulls basketball team. I, I, I did a lot of stuff for a lot of famous people. But that's only because God allowed me to. He, he wanted me to go and to be an influence on people in high level of society and to share the gospel with them and to share my talents and my abilities. And that is the same thing he wants to do with everyone watching this video. He has a plan and a purpose for your life, Jeremiah 29, 11. For the thoughts that I have towards you are thoughts of peace and not of evil, save the Lord to bring you to an expected end. He has a plan and a destiny for all who are watching this video and those who are going to watch it and those who ain't watched it. Now, here we go. Um, I had a fear, even though I worked in a kitchen all my life, had my own business, we did very well. I've, I've been an executive chef at some very famous, well-known restaurants in New Jersey and had my own business, but I always had a fear of making bread and making dough. I, I don't know why. I made my own desserts and we made everything fresh from scratch. But there was that fear about yeast and dough. Well, just to let you all know, the Bible represents, uh, the Bible, in the Bible, yeast represents sin. In here, we're just going to use it to raise the dough. And that's why the children of Israel were told to get out of Dodge and not put no leaven in there because God was giving them an illustration that they needed to leave in, in haste and they didn't want no leaven in there. Now, I said all that to say this. We're gonna go over the ingredients that you're gonna need to accomplish this magnificent feat of making pizza dough. And by the way, too, the Bible also says in 1 Timothy that God did not give you a spirit of fear. He didn't give it to me. He gave me power and love and a sound mind. So if you have fear in your life, it's not from God, and you tell that devil to just get out of your life in whatever area it is. It may be ruling your whole life. I had fear run my life, and I had to tell it to leave because the Bible said the devil comes, and he, he roars around like a hungry lion seeking whom he may try to devour. But it says he seems like a hungry lion because the true lion is the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's Jesus Christ. And I noticed when I stopped putting the meat out for that, that, that lion that was pretending to be God, that lion, that devil, I stopped putting meat out him from him, I didn't give him nothing to eat. He had, he had to leave me alone. Because the Bible said that, that when you resist the devil, he shall flee. So he had to get out of my life. So if, if, if fear is running your life, you don't need to take pills. You don't need to drink alcohol. You don't need to go see uh, some psychic. That, that's condemned by God's abomination sin anyway. You don't need to call Oprah. You don't need to go on Dr. Phil. You don't need to write a letter to Dear Abby. You just call on the name of the living God, and his name is Jesus. And he triumphed over all death, hell, and the grave on that rugged cross. Hallelujah. We got to get excited about that. So today's message is not your pizza dough. Today, we're tuning in to who you are. I've had two prophetic people tell me this week, Pastor Tony, just be who God called you to be. And that's my ministering to you all out there, is to just be who God called you to be. If you like to have fun, have fun. If you like to dance, dance. If you like to sing, sing. If you like to shout, shout. I like to do all them things. At 55 years old, I still, I still like to have fun like a little kid. 
uh, you know, uh, my, 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 my aggress uh, behavior is a little aggressive at times. I've tried to be other people. I've tried to be quiet. I've tried to be this. I've tried to be somber. As a pastor, I, I wanted, you know, I could never see myself in a suit and a tie and a briefcase. That's not who God called me to be. So my challenge out there, before we make this pizza, this is going to be so quick, you ain't going to believe it, is who has God called you to be and just be it. Now we're going to get to making some real tasty crusty dough. The ingredients that you all will need will be one package and one package alone of dry yeast. Don't buy the instant for this recipe. If you want to make this dough, you buy dry active yeast. Not fresh, not instant. I use Hodgson Mills. You can use Red Star, you can use Fleischmann's, but just make sure it's one package of dry active yeast. You are going to need unbleached bread flour. I use King Arthur. It is the best as far as I'm concerned. I use unbleached white whole wheat flour. I use sugar, salt, Bertoli extra virgin olive oil, and you are going to need a mixing bowl, a KitchenAid mixer, you're going to need uh, measuring spoons, measuring cups, a spindle for your KitchenAid to knead the dough, a thermometer, a meat thermometer to, for your temperature on your water. I suggest you use this until you get the hang of it. A whisk, a timer, two bowls, because we're going to put the dough in the bowl, saran wrap for the bowl, a towel to wipe your olive oil in the bowl so when you put it in it doesn't stick, and a knife. Now, here we go. We're going to start with the water. I'm going to take one cup, a little over a cup. You, you can do it with one cup. I've made this recipe using one cup, but I found out at times, depending on the humidity in the room and the weather, makes a difference. Now you want to get your water to a temperature of around 115. You don't want to go above too much above that because then you're going to kill your yeast. And if you go too far, not hot enough, your yeast will not activate. Let's see what we have here. I'm showing. Okay, we're it's climbing a little bit. Okay. Perfect, 115. I'm going to start with a cup. And I got a quarter cup here, but I'm not going to quite. I'm going to go about one and an eighth. Since I don't have an eighth cup, I'm going to do the quarter cup halfway. Okay, now that I have that, I make sure your bowl's nice and clean. We don't want any dirty pizza dough. Then I'm going to drop my envelope, make sure I get it all out here in my water because the lock gets stuck in the corners there. And I'm going to take my whisk and I'm going to whisk in the water and the yeast, the warm water until it's mixed in there properly. And you're going to you're going to smell it. You can tell when it's the yeast is fresh. Make sure you check the package date. You don't want to buy nothing old. Alright. Alright, we're going to now, we're going to let that sit. You want to call it bloom in legal terms. You want to let it bloom between five and eight minutes. And I'm going to give it five because when we come back, I'm going to mix up some of the dry ingredients that will take a minute or so just for you all you um, new people out there that have never done this before when you get a little better at it you could might let it go a little longer but I'm gonna set my timer for five minutes be back in five
Don't touch that dial. Well, here we are, back at the ranch, ready to mix up our dough. Sorry for the long introduction, a little longer than I wanted to, but now we're gonna just, we're gonna whip in everything. Uh, so stick with me. I have my mixing bowl here now. You're gonna take your mixing bowl. And I forgot my butter knife. You're gonna take your mixing bowl and your flour. You're gonna take two cups, and I, I level mine off. There's one. Two. And that's it for the bread flour. Now we're gonna take one cup of the whole wheat white flour. Don't get nervous about the whole wheat. You're gonna you're gonna love this dough recipe. You got one. Now you got three cups of flour. Okay. Now you're gonna use you want to use um, one eighth teaspoon salt. Now you can might go a little more. The rest is good. Your salt, and I use a good pinch or so sugar. Remember, you're not making dessert now. You don't want it real sweet, sweet at all. Then I'm going to take my whisk, and I'm going to make sure all my dry ingredients are well combined. Okay, so we want that to balance out while we're making our dough. I'm going to rest that for one second. Then I'm going to pre-measure. And I, I, You could do this ahead of time, but I'm doing this for your benefit so you could see this. I'm going to take two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. I might put just a little, one little drop more than that. All right, and then I'll put that aside. Now I'm gonna put my dry ingredients, okay, over my bloomed yeast. Get a, a spatula here. I'm gonna put it all down. All right, now we have our dry in there. And as I began to slowly knead my dough, like on two, I'm going to incorporate drizzle in the olive oil on both sides, slowly, a little bit at a time, on each side. You don't want to just throw it in there. You want to drizzle, stream it in. I like to save this with a little, if there is any olive oil that won't come out, I save this in case my dough is too dry, then I'll splash a little more water in there if the dough is too dry. Now, I'm going to let this mix just like this, maybe. Go a little faster, one notch up, and then I'm going to mix this dough for 10 minutes. So I'm going to set my timer again, set my timer again for 10 more minutes. But before I do, I'm going to check, I'm going to feel my dough. That dough's perfect. And I'm going to check my dough. All right. First. I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes, and after 10 minutes, as you can see, your dough is being kneaded now at a, at a, at a, at a um, steady speed. It's coming, it's coming off the walls now. That's what you're looking for. All right, and it's it, the yeast is activated because you can see the dough is starting to rise up a little bit. And it's coming off the sides. That's what you want. You don't want it sticking, and you don't want it real wet, and you don't want it real dry. And you, this is a personal thing. You're gonna have to get the feel of it, and it's only done by trial and error. And uh, we'll see you back here in about 10 minutes. Here we are back at the ranch again for the third and final round. 
Um, it, it's been 10 minutes now. The dough is done for this stage. Now I'm going to take you out through here and we're going to take our towel, our one paper towel, and I'm going to lightly put the extra virgin olive oil on here, just as a little dab will do you. And then I'm going to go over the bowl so it doesn't stick. Okay, another little squirt there for this one. And I'm going to lightly grease it up just so it doesn't stick. I, I don't want to use no spray or you, you you don't know what's in that stuff. It might it might be pesticides, I don't know. Anyway. It's not enough. We're gonna put a little more in here. Alright. Okay, I said we'll touch more. And after we do that, we're going to remove, uh, here we go, we're going to take the dough off the hook, it should make a clean break, see, take my dough hook off, put it in the sink for washing, I want you to see that, how the bowl comes out, because you have all your ingredients, it came off the bottom and the side, now you have, you can tell how it's got a nice elasticity to it, shouldn't be too dry and it shouldn't be too wet but like I said the weather really makes the difference okay now I'm gonna I, I make two doughs two 12 ounce doughs because I put them in my oven all right if you want a bigger dough you make it however big you want you want to make it smaller make it smaller but for me I like 11 12 ounce dough so I, I have my scale here. You don't have to have a scale. You, you could probably do it by eye and it would be fine. But I do mine like this. I should get around 12 ounces or so. Well, pretty accurate. All right. That one's about an ounce over. I'll just take it off a little bit. You could leave it on there. I'm, I'm just a little over the edge on it. It's my personality. Uh, now I'm going to take my dough. Cameraman, are you getting it? Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to hand knead it for a little bit. Just a minute or two. Then I'm going to take my finger and close up the ball in the back. And you have a nice smooth top, pretty much. It's not going to be perfect. I'm going to put it in my, see, I'm going to put it in my bowl. Alright, close up the back. There you go. Make sure it's nice and round. Put it in your bowl. Now, if you want to make your pizza or tomato pie the same day, you could leave this set out for like an hour and a half, two hours. It'll be okay to use. Personally, I don't like to use my dough the same day. And that's why I put mine in the refrigerator. Either way, if I was you, I would cover my dough and um, put it in a warm, set it in a warm place, you know, a warmer place in your kitchen. Um, if you, I wouldn't do this, but some people would turn on the oven and put it near the oven to rise up a little quicker. I don't do that. I'm going to put mine in the refrigerator because, as I said, for me, my dough, my crust comes out so much better the next day than if I have it the same day. Eh, I've done it the same day because we wanted to eat. And it was okay, but I am a type A personality. I like it the best. If you see any of our videos or any of our pictures we have posted on Facebook, you see our crust is um, is, is very dark and crisp. Not burnt, but dark and crisp. And um, when, when, when we make our pie, no matter how many toppings we put on it, when you fold it, that crust should be able to stick straight out. And that's what we shoot for. If you look at the bottom of our pie, 
with an electric oven in the mountains of South Carolina with a two to three dollar piece of tile we make a pie that's comparable and not once again I'm not boasting but it's good if not better than anything up there in New Jersey I can't believe it because you know it's, it's just incredible that we could do that with that oven and I would like to say it's important if you continue on the next step when you go to make your tomato pie or pizza that you use the finest ingredients. You don't skimp on your cheese or don't skimp on your buy San Marzano tomatoes. They're a little more money. Make sure that they're certified on a can. It says DOP certified. Make sure you use good ingredients, good pepperoni, good sausage. If, if you don't use good ingredients, it's, 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 it's going to cost you a few more pennies, but it's better in the long run. Why skimp when you're that you're making a tomato pie or pizza. I haven't found anything better um, other than Jesus. So I'd like to take my hat off to y'all today and bless you in the name of Jesus that may your dough rise and may you have a blessed time making tomato pie or pizza, whatever your choice. Um, if you're ever in the area of Landrum, South Carolina, please Facebook message me or call me on the numbers on our my Facebook page and I'll make a reservation here to stay with us for dinner. Um, we're a ministry of, of hospitality. Here's our ministry. It's called Loaves and Fishes Feeding the Multitude. Um, we like to not entertain people but be hospitable and feed people and minister to people and pray for those who, who need a prayer. And um, we're not religious at all. We don't like religion. We just love relationship. We're, we're getting our back deck fixed. We had a tree fall on our house. We're getting a brand new deck come down, sit a spell, have some real South Carolina homemade sweet tea. This week I'm making a fresh South Carolina peach and fresh blueberry pie with a sour cream custard and a, um, a crumb topping, a streusel topping. And uh, we're going to make a video for that. But stay in touch. Um, we love your emails and all your comments. Feel free to comment and send emails. And I pray all is well with you and your family. In Jesus' name, amen.